Hey, it's Jessie. Um, for those of you who don't recognize me or who don't know me, I teach the Wheel Intensive course for beginners. Um, I also tech during the weekdays. Um, so yeah, hey. Anyways, today I wanted to give you a quick tour um, of my home pottery studio. Wanted to give you some tips and tricks about having a setup of a wheel at home, um, things to consider about your space, um, as well as, you know, just the cleanup management. So if you've already got your wheel from Chaplet, and if you don't already know, Chaplet is renting out our Potter wheels on a monthly fee for students and members of our studio, um, which is a really great opportunity, you know, to have a home set up. One of the things you want to think about is the space that you're going to set up in. You want to make sure you have great ventilation. You know, you want to consider the shelving and storage organization. That way you have a place for your, your drying pieces that you just threw on the wheel. You want to make sure that you do have wood boards um, as well. I feel like the wood board is also a great alternative to having um, the wedging plaster block. Um, so if you don't already have, you know, the the plaster slab like we have at the studio, then, you know, you can easily just use any wood board. You could use a butcher block. Um, you can also use like a marble countertop like this. Sometimes um, I know there are marble cutting boards and things like that. You could probably also use the cutting board um, or your marble countertop in your kitchen. Um, you know, you just want to make sure that you commit to a really thorough cleanup process because you don't want that dry clay like this, um, you know, to get into your food. You don't want to ingest it. You don't really want to breathe it. So again, if you have rugs down on your floor, you want to make sure that you take up the rug off the floor because as the clay dries, it turns to dust. You can see my dusty wheel here. It turns to dust and it will settle into, you know, the fabric of your carpet, of your bed. Um, and you just want to make sure that your clean, your living area is clean and free of, you know, this, you know, these dirty clay particles. <laughs> it gets very dirty. So that's what you want to do. Also, you want to consider your flooring. You know, if you have a rug, pull up the rug. You want to make sure to maybe even put down a protective barrier on the floor. You can use construction um, craft paper that you use when you repaint your home. I have this floor here that's like a, I don't even know what material it is, but it's like fake wood um, in my sunroom and I can mop it. I mop it so many times. I mop it twice a day. I mop it after every um, pottery session. So you just want to think about, you know, the durability. You don't really want to expose your beautiful new wood floors. If you have to mop it every day, it'll, it'll destroy it. So, you know, maybe throw down a protective barrier, like I said, or you can even use a plastic tarp. Um, yeah, so those are things to consider about your room. Also, you wanna think about your outlet and the things that you'll need to put into the outlet. So obviously, number one, your wheel, um, maybe a lamp light source for at night, a fan, a heater, or even an air filter. So which I would run the air filter when you're not working in the space or like at least have the fan so it's not blowing at you because the, the dust is stirring in the room. And again, like I said, you don't really want to breathe that in. I have here some great wood shelves from Ikea. What I love about them is that I can designate each um, shelf height for the needs that I have. This here is like a workstation that I use also from Ikea. I found a marble slab that I placed on top and I have a plaster slab that I made home DIY. It was very easy, very simple. All you need is wood, some plaster of Paris and a plastic liner. Basically you wanna build a wood frame. You wanna get that plaster of Paris. You wanna staple a, a plastic, a thick plastic liner on the outside of the frame. Um, I did it here, you can see the staples. Um, and you wanna pull it taut like a drum, almost kinda of like how you're, you would stretch a canvas. And it acts as like the perfect liner for when you pour the plaster into the wood frame. 
it takes about two weeks to fully cure, um, but I started using it after 48 hours, almost immediately. I think that this is essential if you have a home studio. You definitely want to save and recycle clay, so the plaster slab is the best way to do it because the plaster slab absorbs moisture from the clay as you're wedging it. Um, or in, not even as you're wedging it, as the, the wet clay is sitting on the plaster slab, it's absorbing all that moisture. So it's really good for recycling. So you've decided where you're gonna place your wheel. My advice is to put the wheel, if you can, in the corner of the room. This way, it helps to minimize and contain the mess that the wheel makes. One really easy practice that I've used as a protective barrier to protect my walls was taking a plastic liner sheet, you can use a dry cleaning sheet, you can use garbage bags that you cut up and open so that it, you have more surface area. You take two pieces or three pieces, however many, you take painter's tape and you take the protective barrier and you just tape it to the corner. And you can add more depending on, you know, the surface area that you wanna cover. Um, I like the corner because again, with the adjoining walls, it minimizes um, the surface area that I'm infecting. If you can't choose a corner in your room, what I've seen, my colleague has done it. He's taken cardboard boxes and built basically a fort around his wheel, um, taking the recycled cardboard boxes and you just tape the seams to create a fort. So you can easily just contain and minimize the mess from your wheel. Another thing that I have found is at the dollar store, I think it's called Dollar General, by me, in the craft section, they had these poster boards for science fairs and presentation boards um, for school and crafts. You can take one of these boards, they, I think they cost about three or four dollars. They already have the seams and it fits perfectly around the wheel. And then if you needed to extend the wall of your barrier, you just take extra cardboard that you have lying around your house and you take those seams to create um, a, larger, a larger contained space. This just really helps to minimize your cleanup at the end of each day. Again, when you're working on the wheel, the centrifugal force of the wheel is going to splatter your water, the clay particles around. So this is what splatters on your walls. Goes pretty high if you don't have a protective barrier. It's on my plants, it's on my plant stand, it's on the walls. Do you see this? This is the floor behind my wheel as well. So this is why it's really important that you're either in an area that you can mop or you also then just put down a tarp on your floor as well. So one more thing that I also wanted to mention about having the wheel set up, you wanna make sure that your wheel is level. So you're gonna go to the hardware store, your local hardware store or even Home Depot, they're still open. They're considered essential businesses, and you're gonna find these wood shims. Just ask somebody, they will tell you where they are. Um, and you're gonna use these on the feet of your potter wheels in order to level out your wheel. So what you'll do is you'll put the level, <coughs> let's make sure, hopefully mine is level. You're gonna put the level like so on your wheel, and you're gonna do it from east to west or whatever, from, from nine o'clock to three o'clock and from 12 o'clock to six o'clock. So the wheel is level. You just wanna make sure that the surface that you're working on is already level. So that way you're not, you know, even more challenged with why your pieces are kind of wabi-sabi. Although wabi-sabi is cool. So now that you're set up and you're ready to start working, you wanna be able to manage the cleanup. Um, that's cleaning your hands, cleaning your tools, cleaning your drip pan and your wheel when you're done. Um, what I like to use is my home sink. 
No, I'm just kidding. You're not gonna use your home sink because you're gonna fuck up your pipes. Unless you have the fancy pants filtration system with the clay trap or a porcelain trap like we have at Shop Play, you're not gonna do it. So what I like to do is I have a warm bucket of water that I use. This is like a mop bucket. And I use this, it's like a good size to, you know, wash my hands and wash my tools. Um, I use it to wash my drip pan. And after I'm done using it, and it gets really thick and slip like really like dirty really thoroughly dirty clay water i take the water in there and i spill it into a five gallon bucket um that waits for my other five gallon bucket outside that i use to filter um that dirty clay water it just helps to facilitate i also mop my floors daily after each pottery session um and i take that water again and i throw it into my five gallon bucket of water that's just waiting here to be spilled into my whole filtration system that I keep outside. So stay tuned for the next segment. I'm going to talk about and show you what I mean when I say this five gallon bucket filtration system. It basically filters the water um, like a coffee filter, cleans it, it cleans it. It like basically separates the, the clay particles from the water so that you can spill out that water onto the curbside and not worry about contaminating the environment. It's very clean. So stay tuned. Thanks. So this is the five gallon bucket filtration system that I found to be really useful um, and helpful for me to clean my dirty clay water after I've cleaned the whole studio, my hands and everything else like that. It just, it's, it's a good way to filter the water and dispose of the water that you use inside your clay studio without using the pipes in your home. So what you're going to want to do is you're gonna to wanna to start with four five gallon buckets. You could use three, I use four because I have a lot of water that I end up having to discard of. Um, you can buy them at your local hardware store or Home Depot. You can sometimes find them on the sidewalk. Uh, during recycling days, I found one, this tied one, um, or even like I believe bakeries also have extra five gallon buckets that I think that they leave out on their curbside as well. Um, so here, let me show you. Bucket number one, I'm gonna show you this. You're gonna get a drill and a drill head and you're gonna drill these holes into the bottom of the bucket, kind of like a colander. Bucket number two is literally just the bucket that this, that bucket number one is gonna nest inside of. I don't know if you can see this through the light, but there's about four inches here of water that you can collect. So once you go over that, the water that you're filtering is just going to basically suspend with the water that you're filtering. Like the water that you filtered is gonna suspend with the water that you're filtering and it's not gonna really be clean. The next thing you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna wanna grab a pillowcase. So this one I already have in the works. Um, you're gonna grab a pillowcase. I prefer the pillowcases that are not jersey material. I find that those don't work very well. I use the ones that are 100% cotton that are tightly woven. And you basically treat it like a tea bag or like a coffee filter. And you place it inside the bucket. When you do this, it'll be a, a clean, empty pillowcase. So you're just gonna drape it, drop it into the bucket and then drape the edge um, of that pillowcase and you're gonna fold it outward over the rim of the bucket. So this, like a coffee filter, just like a coffee filter. Okay, just like that. This is my dirty clay water from the studio, inside the studio, I just pour it in. I don't pour it all in because, you know, again, I know I only have four inches and I already have water in here from before that's still filtering out. As it filters through the pillowcase and through the holes of your colander of your Home Depot five gallon bucket, it then collects water into bucket number two, the bottom bucket. Also, what's good about having the four gallon bucket system, you have another bucket to, to hold the water so that you can dump the water from you can't really see it, but it's pretty clean. 
And then you take this water and you throw it to your curbside. I throw it um, on a dirt mound that I have in my backyard, but sometimes you can just, not even sometimes, I would just throw it um, outside on the street or on that dirt mound. Since you're living in the city, I'm assuming you're gonna put this on your curbside and it's totally fine and safe for the environment because you've already sifted through um, the other clay particles. So I hope this is helpful. Um, utilize this in your home studio. Don't use your sink. Don't make problems for your landlord or yourself if you're a homeowner. And yeah, this will be fun. It's super easy. I hope you enjoyed the tour of my home studio. My name's Jesse. You can follow me on Instagram. My handle is at femsoul, and that's F like Frank, E-M-M-E-S-O-L-E. -E. DM me with questions. If you have any requests for other tutorials, let me know or just say what's up. Hey, um, would love that. Can't wait to hear from you. Bye.